Umihara Kawase is a platforming game that was released on the Super Famicom in 1994. Several sequels featuring this cute young sushi chef have followed over the years, including her latest foray onto the Nintendo Switch with Umihara Kawase Fresh. The game see you working your way through various water worlds full of marine creatures, using your fishing line to grapple and hook your way through to the stage exits. The colours are vivid and bright, and the main character cute and cheerful, and the games have an innocent fun and charm about them. But as it turns out, not all is as it seems in the land of Umihara Kawase. Nearly two decades after the original game's release, developer Sakai Kiyoshi posted the hidden truth behind the game's setting on his blog. This backstory was so dark and shocking that it was soon deleted, but not before people were able to save and share it, and you can still view it through the internet archive as well. This dark and horrific tale contrasted sharply with the game's bright nature, leaving many confused and even frightened. As it turned out, Umihara Kawase wasn't just a cute and simple platformer. The developer had something much more dark and complex in mind. Several years before Kawase's birth, Kawase's father travelled the world as a sushi chef, pursuing the ultimate in taste. While seeking a flavour that would bring joy to others, he met Kawase's mother, who was working at a diner. These two youths on the same path got married and started their own small diner, but Kawase's father, seeking to become a pro in the uncompromising world of sushi chefs, lost himself in the warmth of his family and realised that he had lost his professional rigour. Unable to throw away his career, he once again chose to follow his dream and got divorced from Kawase's mother. Of their two daughters, the eldest stayed with their mother, while Kawase went to live with her father. Being a baby, Kawase had no memories of her mother at this time, and she heard nothing of her growing up either, so she had no idea that she had an older sister. Kawase's junior high years Kawase travelled the world with her father, and gradually, her eyes awoke to the same path. One day, her father went into the mountains as he always did, to gather superior ingredients for his cooking. But he never returned. The police were unable to find him, and a death certificate was issued. The restaurant he lived and worked in then held a small funeral for him. After that, the restaurant's owners took care of Kawase until she graduated junior high. They recommended she go on to high school as well, but she decided to follow in the same path as her father and become a sushi chef. Around the same time, Kawase's older sister was helping at her mother's restaurant, devoting herself to the same path, and slowly found herself being more and more drawn into the professional side of things. Her mother, seeing her daughter being drawn into the same path as her ex-husband, prepared herself to let her daughter follow that same dream. However, one day, her daughter overheard a customer boasting that one can't become a professional chef unless they've tasted the liver of a puffer fish. So while her mother was out, she illegally prepared and ate one, dying from poisoning. Kawase at 19 In order to hone her skills as a sushi chef, Kawase entered a restaurant with a sign out the front looking for new workers. She ate the simple meals served to her there, yet she was shocked by the taste. It was like nothing she'd ever tasted before, just like a mother's home cooking. She attempted to leave the restaurant, realising how much her own skills were lacking, but the owner stopped her, having realised this girl was her daughter the moment she laid eyes on her. Kawase decided to start her training at this restaurant all over again from scratch. Kawase was unaware the woman was her real mother, but the days passed full of joy and love. During this time she heard stories of her dead sister as well, unaware that she was her real sister. One day, when her mother set out for the market, she overheard a conversation and learned that the owner of the restaurant was her real mother. Her father died while searching for the ultimate taste experience, 
and her sister died while eating pufferfish she had prepared illegally. Kawase realized she'd also lost sight of her own path as well. She wrote a farewell letter, and on her way out of the restaurant, her mother, understanding everything, handed her some rice balls she had prepared herself, telling her they were the first taste she had of her mother's cooking, and they would also be the last. The path I am on is a harsh one, Kawase told her mother, rejecting the rice balls and leaving, crying on the inside all the while. She had learnt the true depths of the path she must follow. The game is set in Kawase's deep psyche, and the visuals are representative of that. They are, so to speak, like viewing the dreams Kawase has at night, always seeking love from parents who were never satisfied. The images in her mind have become rather dreary, and as she is always striving towards her goal of achieving the ultimate taste, this is represented in her battle with the fish. However, the real battle is essentially with herself, and that is the nature of the game. The true fight is within Kawase herself. If you've been watching the images of the game all this time, then you can probably see why people were shocked to discover that this was the background in the developer's mind the whole time when he and others were making the game. It was supposed to be a fun and bright platformer with a cute female character, yet the game's true intentions were something far darker. The game was really a look into the broken psyche of a girl who had lost everything, all in the pursuit of a career that had already claimed two family members and delivered her mother, her only remaining family, unending heartbreak. Kawase wasn't literally in a water world doing battle with fish to escape. The visuals were representative of her battle with the harsh path she had chosen, the path that had destroyed her family. After people complained about how dark this setting was, Sakai clarified that this wasn't the official setting of the game, but rather something he'd written down as his personal view on matters. In fact, the 2013 DS game, Sayonara Umihara Kawase, is the only game to officially even call her a travelling sushi chef. Yet, the damage was done. Now the thought would always be in the back of people's minds while playing. Was it really nothing more than a fun platformer battling across various water worlds full of fish? Or was the game something darker? A deep dive into the broken psyche of a depressed young woman, unable to stop herself from following the same path that had already taken two of her family members and severed her relationship with her mother. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.